<laughs> YouTube, what's going on, guys? Today, we're going to do our full team affinity review. I'm going to go over all the cards. I'll give you the best pick, I think, in each pack, is you know, and then an honorable mention, I suppose. And then talk about how I have gotten the TA progress that I've gotten so far. I'll get out the way so you guys can see. It's not crazy, but it's pretty good, man. It's pretty good. I'll explain what I've done so far. And then uh, that's it. It's really not that, that complex, and it's quite nice. So we'll start off with AL East. This is Heston Kirstad. Pretty solid card all the way around. Uh, Sedane Rafaela who's well balanced, I suppose, around, you know, he's a little bit meh offensively. Hopefully his swing is good. I haven't tried him. There wasn't moments for every card. So like, uh, I couldn't try all the cards yet. Uh, Dominguez, I mean, yeah. Uh, Xavier Isaac and Orobis Martinez. Now this doesn't really take much of an eye to point out that I think Dominguez is by far the best card here. He's just a switch hitter with five tool elements to it. Vision's a little bit, all right. Contact versus left, he's a little low, but he fits the Buxton team and that just puts him, uh, already he's better on his own, but he, it puts him way above. I'm already using him on the squad through Hall of Fame. Uh, honorable mentions, I think Kerstad could be fun. I think he's a little bit better than people might think. The swing's good. But I think other than Dominguez, I think the actual second best pick is probably this guy. Just because his defense isn't bad at all. Plays pretty good positions and hits really well too. So I think he might be solid. Um, but if you need somebody who could be a utility guy for you, maybe try him. It's really up to you. I think it's just Dominguez clears. So there's that. Uh, that's for the AL East. NL East. Eddie Matthews. I mean, if you've played DD for the last like seven years, you've seen this card. You're familiar with this card and you probably like this card. Really good stats all the way around defense plays better than that to be honest i really think he plays better than that i've seen guys with those similar ratings just don't play as good he gets good animations incredible quirks breaking ball hitter dead red all of them and just a fantastic swing some of the best leverage i've seen on a guy you know in terms of swing, like launch angle it's just consistently like left center tanks pulls the ball really well hits every pitch well so definitely not a bad choice noble meyer really good mix with a uh, nice velocity and break ratings Control's a little iffy on the pitches individually, but still pretty good. Hits per nine's a little low. Um, I think you can get away with this guy on pitch mix alone for the most part. Plus, he's got a hard slider from what I've seen, a hard-ish slider and a sinker. So definitely a pretty good pick if you need pitching. Acuna, little baby Acuna from the Mets. I think he's fun. I think he's real fun. I think after a few parallel levels, when you get that 68 power up a little bit and you get that contact versus lefties up, that combined with the pretty decent clutch and the defense and speed, he's fun. I think he's real fun. I think he's going to give you a lot of, of value. I think he's an incredible BR card. If you play mostly Hall of Fame and All-Star, you'll probably have a good time with this guy at the leadoff spot. So I like him. Mick Abel, again, very similar to Noble Meyer, except a little bit less control, but a lot better hits per nine. And Clutch with a really good pitch mix too, and definitely a hard slider. Change up sinker. So probably better than, I think he's better than Noble, just because he's got more stamina too. And he has a... 97 break on the slider so i think he's probably a little bit better than noble as well because well they're both big six five yeah they're both six five so whoever has a funkier motion but i'd probably look at mick first i have to see i haven't tried either of these guys yet it's just tough joey manass he's a bit of a dh i wouldn't put him in third or left he's an offensive guy good clutch rating he's really just a bat here if you really like his swing go for him best card in this pack i think i might go with mick personally uh but if you're gonna go offensive ed matthews just because he's consistent but i'm gonna go with mick here but I don't think there's really a, I think there's really no bad choice in this other than maybe Joey. I don't really think you need him. I think there's better options for that kind of job, the DH spot, and we'll get there real soon. That's the NL East. On the AL Central pack, we got Quan. I think this guy is very valuable on Legend because of the vision and the contacts, defense, and the speed solid too. I think the powers are going to play up. I, I hit an absolute bomb with him in some of the showdowns I used. He's actually, he's got a great swing. If you like him, go for it. He's fun. Noah Schultz, six foot nine, 220 pounds, great stats. I've, I've clearly abused him already in events. Incredible mix. And uh, yeah, I mean, a little bit of control issues, I suppose, but I've used him in ranked. I've used him in events and he's been solid. I think he's uh, quite obviously going to be the pick here, even though we haven't gotten to the other three. He's just, he, only downside to him is he, he throws from the stretch. That's, I wish it was a little bit of a windup, but otherwise he's hard to argue with. Justin Verlander is, I think is poo-poo. Uh, pitch breaks aren't even that good for a card that has no outlier and no meta pitch mix. So the stats are eh. I think he'd get lit up personally. Alex Gordon, fun card. I like his utility being able to play third base. I wish he had a first base secondary too. Probably play a really, really good corner outfield. Great swing, good clutch rating. I think he's undervalued, but definitely not the best pick here. And then Emmanuel Rodriguez fits Buxton team and is really well-rounded as a card. I think on the Buxton team, his value is elevated incredibly. He gets to diamond fielder and center with 92 speed and powers eclipsing 100 each side. So definitely undervalued for that. I think if you're running Buxton team, he's the must pick. If you're not, well, actually, no. I think if you're running Buxton, he's the first offensive pick, but I think the must pick's gotta be Noah Schultz. I think he's gonna give you a really solid arm in the, in the rotation. I think he should be at least considered for a, a top five spot on your rotation for everybody at this point for sure on to the nl central we got michael bush not too impressive because his offense is all right 
But for that defense, I don't think it's great. I don't. He's a righty killer, to be honest. Great swing, though. Dibble, obviously, for a lot of people, is going to do well. A lot of people struggle with the velo, and he's got great pitch breaks, including a slider and a cutter. So that Dibble's Dibble. Greg Vaughn got the pop. Does fit Buxton team, so that makes him usable in left field. We're talking 70 speed, 76 fielding. At P4, he actually gets the gold, and he gets max powers, essentially. So fun on that team. Other than that, eh. Josh Bell, the de facto baseline pick here for me. Great swing. Does This is what I'm talking about when I said there's a better DH for you other than Joey Manass. Bell does the job better, right? DH him, and he's got that swing. It just plays, and he hits tanks. No quirks, doesn't even need him. Joe Torre is slept on big time. Fits the Arenado team, which covers a lot of his weaknesses, especially power versus lefties, and gives him a defense boost. But on his own, he's going to play really well. Great quirks. And he's got, a, I think he's got an undervalued swing, plays third, catcher in first, that little triangle back there. I think he's an incredible option. I would take him over Garver on the Arenado team, personally. I like him a lot more. I like the defense. I like his swing and that clutch rating. 125 is incredible. So love to see that. And uh, that's the central on to the AO West. J.R. Richard, four fastballs. As outlier fastball, but he's just got four of them. He's a little funky to face and the per nines are really solid. I mean, the hits per nine at least is, but... Uh, he might be funky to hit the first time around or if you can't hit velo, but he doesn't really have it all speed. It kind of hurts him. Tim Salmon, weird splits. If you really like his swing, go for it. But to me, he's like a DH that doesn't really do that particularly well. Maybe he had a better clutch rating, but your highest offensive stat being discipline is kind of a waste. Jacob Wilson, power is a little bit weak, but he might, it might play higher. Great clutch rating, solid vision. I think a really solid card on legend. People might overlook that, but other than that, I don't know. Not sure. Positions and rice, shortstop third, left and right, which is pretty cool, actually. Vogelbach, no. 125 discipline is just what's the point low clutch rating so he's not even a great pinch hitter i think this card this is clearly an instance where they copy and pasted a card from previous years with a 93 overall and thought that that'd be the same as the others when you this is a card that's built for this year's game and you can tell this is why it doesn't always work to copy paste mitch garver i mean arenado team and he's an incredible card for a lot of people i don't really like swinging with him but he's got the numbers it's hard to argue with it man it really is so definitely a good option the card in this pack to go with gonna go with garver i think it's pretty obviously garver you know i don't think anyone's really close to him value wise on to the nl west drew jones uh, 48 visions real low he's a defensive guy but fits buxton team gives him a huge power boost so if you like all or nothing kind of guys who play really good defense he's gonna be the pick for you uh one thing to note he's pretty tall he stands up tall i think he changed his swing though felt like aaron judges last year but it's a little different chase dollander sneaky good hits per nine's a little bit eh but the k per nine's solid and uh, which is nice, a little less foul balls. We could all use that. And he's got a slider, a hard slider, really hard slider, and a sinker as well. All these future star guys have these five pitch mix. It's very familiar. I'm not sure how he throws though, the arm slot wise. Haven't faced him, but not a terrible option. Kenley Jansen, cutter slider, two seam. Something to note here. Really good clutch, good velo, great break, but no changeup, which kind of hurts. It makes him worse significantly than any other Kenley that we've seen, and no quirks, but I think he's still pretty solid if you need relievers. Will Myers, fun card. Definitely a fun card. Plays first, second, left, center, and right. I think he'll probably play okay at second, but I don't know. Weird splits. I think cycle card should probably be a little bit better than this, personally. I think he's going to be really fun, and he's got a great swing, so keep that in mind. And then Chili Davis, who's got a weird build. Clutch rating's maxed out, but numbers versus lefties are just too poor to make that work. Um, he could be a decent pinch hitter versus righties, though, if that's what you want. He's a, And he's got... He's just a DH, if we're going to be honest. He'll be okay in the corner, I guess, but I don't think the bat's warranting that defense. Best pick in this pack, I'm going to go with either of these two guys, Dollander or Kenley, probably Kenley by a, a ball hair, but not by much. And if you go offense, if you play Hall of Famer below, maybe Drew Jones, but Will Myers got a better swing. So it's up to you guys. And I'm a Chili Davis enthusiast. So that's all the cards in TA ranked in a sense, tier list in a way. Now, how to get the progress, right? Well, it's a little bit weird. For me, I did the exchanges this time around because since I finished the Babe collection, I've had a lot of extra cards building up. You get 30,000 TA points for doing the final exchange, 20 for this one. It's a lot, man. It is a lot. So I got that. Then I did the extreme moments for all of them, which get you 10. Did the showdown extreme, which gets you 20 for every division. 20K TA points for every single division if you finish the extreme showdown. Be patient, do your best, try and narrow it down. 20K all at once, you know, one fell swoop is hard to argue with. And then other than that, guys, I just built a team with the cards that I got and then hopped into events and started just swinging it, man. Playing ranked two, got tons of packs. It's really not that bad. Conquest seems to have a little bit lower value this time around from what I've heard. I haven't even looked into it, to be honest. But if you're an online guy, just do the minimum things that you have to do to get a card or two from each one and then just go into games and play and earn the repeatable missions. 
they did change it from online innings pitch to online Ks. And that's the way I've done it. Exchanges are huge. Uh, it's could it, If you have some leftover stubs, it could be good value for you if you're interested in finishing TA as fast as possible to buy some gold to get some exchange progress. If not, just play the game. You'll get a lot more than you think just naturally accruing. There's not any secrets, really. There's no Billy Wagner, get him first, and then just pitch against the CPU or an events and spam that. It doesn't really exist. I think that was probably altered for that reason. So, yeah, that's that. No crazy uh, tips, to be honest. I've really just been playing. I played uh, after doing the, the extreme stuff, the showdown of the moments yesterday. Uh, I hopped into events and just played. And then today I did ranked and got, and this is what I'm, I ended up with, right? So if you guys want to see the progress one more time, I ended up with this. So it's not bad. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the TA. Are you guys enjoying it? I think there. I think it's a TA program, right? Naturally, it's going to be a bunch, uh, a bunch of cards. Most aren't going to make your team better. Some will, and some you could try out if you want to use them. TA is not the place to overhaul your team. It's the place to build a foundation for your team and to raise the floor, right, for baseline minimum for card overalls in the game. Where you really get the best top of the food chain cards are going to be the twenty wins and events now, which are cool. Painter's good, BR, and uh, ranked. So you know. Hop in there if you can, or accrue stubs and get TA collections done from offline stuff and try and use it that way. Um, and they put a bunch of packs in here, which is cool. So, yep, that's pretty much it, guys. Let me know what you guys think. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.